This is a Lino cut simulation exercise. It's done on the iPad using Affinity Designer version 2.6, which will be out soon, but it works just as well in any earlier version of Affinity Designer. Now what we're aiming for is a three-tier Lino cut example like this. Perhaps a little bit complex to start with, but it's somewhere to aim for. Now we start with a blank artboard. It's always best to do these on an artboard. Start with a comic artboard, which I did anyway, um, 6600 by 5400 pixels, which is quite a reasonable size, but it gives you plenty of space to work with big images. Now we're aiming for a layer and group stack that looks something like this. You can name layers to suit your needs, of course, but pay attention to these and the position of them. Lino cut artboard, of course, is the top one. And then you have an erase group, which is indented by one step. You have an erase layer, which is the equivalent of three steps indented. Then the objects that you're going to erase will be placed in that layer. They indent even further. Then you have a black ink layer which is one step out, the grunge layer, which is part of the black ink layer, a mask on the black ink layer, if you like. And that steps it in one, and you can see the down arrow there tells you that that's part of that layer just above it. As with the crescent and the house just up there, they're part of the erase layer. And the down arrow in the erase group shows you the things that are in that erase group. Right at the bottom is the brown paper. That's on the top layer, if you like, right sitting right on the artboard. So pay particular attention to those. You might even want to copy this frame and print that out for your future reference because it can become quite confusing. Now, start with your artboard. Add a textured paper as the first layer. This is the base layer or the paper you're printing on if you keep in mind that lino cut or etching is actually a printing method. Set the blending mode to normal for this paper layer. Now blending modes are quite important in the whole process of this thing in which things are blended in which manner. Add a blank group. This will push the butcher's paper down a layer. Now the blending mode of that group is pass through. And that's probably what it will default to. In the blank group, add an ink layer. And on top of that, a cutting or erase layer. And call it, guess what, erase layer. It's in this layer that you put your drawings that represent your cutouts. In actual lino, this is what you're actually removing. And you can see I've got the lino cut artboard there and right at the bottom the butcher's paper, which is the cream coloured paper. But in between there, or stacked on top of it, you've got the erase group object. So that's a group underneath there. And I've called it erase group. Now below that, I've got another layer. That's the erase layer. I've also got in the erase group objects the black ink layer, which is simply a black ink rectangle placed on top of the artboard with a um, with a with a um, a grunge layer put on top of that. I just couldn't think of it for the moment. There, never mind. Too early in the morning. Now here we go with these things again. In the Erase layer, set its option to Erase. That's the Erase layer. Set its Blend Mode to Erase. Now, below the Erase layer, you have the Black Ink layer with a grunge pattern embedded in this case. It's part of the Erase Group Objects layer. But it's not the Black Ink is not part of the Erase layer. It is part of the Erase Group Objects layer. So you get that right, otherwise you'll find you're cutting right through to the white of the artboard. And you don't want to do that, you only want to cut through to the cream. 
Now let's have another look at this section. Now look at the layer blending modes. This is quite important. The erase group objects, that's at the top there. The erase group objects or erase group, if you just want to shorten that, is pass through. The erase layer, the next one below that, you set that to the erase blend mode. You can see at the top there, 100% opacity and the blend mode is erase. The black ink layer, the blend mode is normal, but if you've masked a grunge layer in that, the erase blend mode is placed. It doesn't matter if you don't use this, if you just have plain black ink, but I've put a grunge layer in it so that you can see just on the left there, there's the speckly faint white patches of the grunge layer. That's because it's erasing or cutting through the black layer a little bit, not much, but a little bit. You can experiment with that to see what you come up with. Now, all other layers are set to normal, including the cutout objects. See those two objects there? There's a rectangle and a diamond, or a square and a diamond if you like. Their blend mode is set to normal. And down the layers, the cutout object or objects can be shapes or SVG images you've created that can emulate the cuts made in Lino Cut work. That locomotive SVG there, that's an SVG file that I've placed in there. Now it's in normal blend mode, but it's in the group of erase group. In this example, you can see the textured paper showing where the ink isn't applied. And that's just what um, a liner cut looks like. Notice that it doesn't matter what colour your lino cut work is. Now you can see there I've put um, some coloured flowers, a coloured flower pattern in the shape of letter A in that group. The group is set to erase, as I just mentioned before. But on the image it shows the cream paper behind the ink layer. So it's cut through to the cream paper. If you want that to be coloured, so to add colour, you need to place a coloured layer outside of the ink erase layer. So right below, just above the uh, cream paper. This then looks like a normal ink drawing. Instead of the backing or undercut paper, the cut shows through to the coloured image. Now if you were trying to colour an image, that's where you'd put the colours. In some instances, you'll need to use the Boolean subtract to clear things like windows and other small objects. And you can see there on the left hand side of that foreground, there's all of those windows are cut out there using the Boolean subtract option. Now they've cut right through to the artboard underneath. So if you had something under there, it would cut through them. Now the trick here is to find a way to stop them from cutting through to the white artboard. It can be done, but I'll leave that one to you. Now here's some objects that are good examples. Here's the gardener, number one. And there's the gardener, number two. A few chickens in the foreground, a nice little etching. And you can see you don't need the black background. You could make that full size if you like. But the black background's there so that the whole thing doesn't look like a washed out um, butcher's paper image. So thanks for watching. I hope you have fun with this exercise. If you subscribe and tap the bell as well, you'll be notified when new videos become available. Share it with your friends. It's all good fun. In coming to grips with the Erase Blend Mode, I received a lot of help and ideas from generous members of the Facebook group Affinity Designer Hands On. Very friendly, very helpful.